In this lecture, we will see how a load spectra factor method can be used to estimate the equivalent single axle loads. In the previous lectures, we have seen how a vehicle damage factor is computed uh, and uh, or a truck factor is computed to estimate the equivalent single axle loads or the design traffic. Okay? So, in this lecture, we are going to discuss about this load spectra factor method. See, in the video of RTF, that is a vehicle damage factor or the truck factor, what we have done is that we have considered the axle load distribution to be uniform in a vehicle class interval okay? and the equivalent single axle loads were computed using the average load from each class interval of that load spectra. Okay? Whereas, in this case of this load spectra factor method, you are not going to uh, you know, find, take an average value from a you know, load bin or a load group and then finding the easel rather than doing that. A statistical analysis of the axle load histogram or the axle load spectra uh, will be done uh, using a suitable probability density functions. Okay? In the previous lectures, we have discussed how uh, axle uh, data is converted to a truck factor or how a, a truck factor. Hello everyone. In the previous lectures, we have seen how a vehicle damage factor or an average truck factor is determined for the axle load data to convert the given axle load spectrum into equivalent number of standard axles uh, for the design of a payment structure. Okay? Now, in this lecture, we will discuss a new con concept which is called the load spectra factor method. Okay? So, in the VDF or the truck factor method, we actually consider the axle load distributions to be uniform within a certain range okay? and the easel will be computed using the average load from each class interval of that particular load spectra. Uh, so, uh, your distribution is essentially considered to be uniform within that load group. Whereas, in this load spectra factor method, we will use the axle load histogram and fit, do some statistical analysis to that axle load spectra as such and it is explained in terms of some probability density functions. And using the moment statistics or taking the you know, multiple moments of that probability density functions, you can develop an equivalency factor which is called a load spectra factor can be estimated. Now, this load spectra can be a factor can then further be used just like you do, you know, you use a vehicle damage factor to compute the design traffic. So, here what you do is that the, the axle load data will be divided into according to its axle load types. Like for example, you can divide it into single axle, single wheels, single axle, dual wheels, tandem axle, tridem axles, etc. And then you can plot the histograms in of the different axle load groups. Okay. Now, for the axle, uh, this histogram, you try to fit an appropriate load spectra. Now, uh, since these are positive values, you can choose any continuous probability density distributions that best fits this data. Uh, essentially, sometimes you know, models like unimodal distributions may work and sometimes that you may go for, for bimodal or multimodal distributions as well. So, Weeble distribution, normal distribution, mixed normal distribution, gamma distribution, etc. Some of the distributions which are you know, commonly used to uh, fit this axle load uh, histogram. So, here you can see, uh, so here you see the axle load histograms which are plotted for a single axle load and a tandem axle load. And for this data, uh, you can fit appropriate uh, distribution uh, functions. Okay. So, uh, you have to choose a continuous probability distributions which are valid for positive values of random variables and in order to fit this you can use some statistical packages like SPSS or you can use origin pro or uh, MATLAB or R programming can be used to fit this functions. See as you can see there is an example of a Weeble distribution given by this distribution function uh, which is used to uh, know, fit certain uh, data. So, you see here this is a 
distribu density curves that are fitted using Weibull distribution for a single axle single wheel and a single axle dual wheel in two directions of traffic. So, just noted here as southbound and northbound and so on. So, you can see here that the axle load distribution does not follow all the axle load distributions even in the same road in the north and south direct bound directions you see that the distributions are not matching. So, they can have different distributions ok. Here uh, no the one Weeble distribution is fitted for all it need not be the case always you, can, you may have to go for different distributions for each of these load spectra and here you see that uh, so this is for a tandem axle uh, in one direction the density function uh, the histogram is plotted and you see that uh, it is it was necessary to go for a multi model so the uh, log normal distribution as shown in this figure so this is a multi model log normal distribution is used to fit this data so likewise you can use some statistical parameters like i square test or something to see what is the best fit um, distribution and fit the data with this distribution okay now, Prosy and Hong has defined a load spectra factor given by LSF is integral x by LS raised to m into fx dx, which uh, can be you know, um, uh, represented as m raised to m by LS raised to m. So, what is this load spectra factor is that from this distribution data, you are actually now converting it into uh, a factor which can convert this data to a standard axle load wherein the LS represents the standard axle load and m raised to m represents this capital m raised to m rep represents the nth order moment of the distribution so what you are trying to do is that use this nth order moment of that distribution function and the uh, no standard axle so use this conversion factor to find what is the effect of the uh, effect of the given axle load spectrum as compared to the standard axle load okay so uh, this is for a single uh, uh, load uh, distribution for multi-model distributions this LSF that is the load spectra can be defined as uh, sigma k is equal to 1 to k w k into m k raised to m by ls raised to m whereas k represents the number of modes and w k represents the weightage that is given for each modes of the multi-mode distribution and m k raised to m represents the small mth moment of the kth mode of the distribution and ls is the uh, L, uh, represents the standard axle load okay now the standard axle load that you have chosen can be uh, chosen as per the design strategy that you use like for example if you are choosing irc 37 approach then ls will have take the values of 65 if it is a single axle single wheel uh, it will take a value of 80 kilo newton if it is a single axle dual wheel 148 kilo newton if it is a tandem axle load and 224 kilo newton if it is a tridem axle load and so on ok. So, the same approach can be used here, but the only difference is that you are not dividing this into your data into different uh, bins and take the mid value of that for finding the uh, you know, equivalency factors rather you are fitting it with a distribution and use the moment factors of those or, or the um, no, mth moment of that uh, distribution to estimate the uh, load spectra factor. Uh, so, uh, it is normally you know it is uh, convenient to choose or it is uh, you can use any moment but any order of the moment but uh, normally you use the uh, fourth order moment. So, you can see that the uh, m raised to 4 can be written as x raised to 4 fx dx ok. So, according to the distribution that you have chosen you can use the same statistical packages to get this fourth order moment as well. So, for each axle load group as I said you can divide it into axle load groups as single axle, single wheel, tandem axle, tridem axle etc. For each axle load group you can determine what is the load uh, spectra factor. Now the equivalent axle loads correspond to that load group can be uh, the load spectra factor multiplied by the frequency that is the number of axle loads in that group and then the total equivalent standard axle loads can be computed as summation of the equivalent axle loads computed for the 
each category of axle load group like the single axle, single axle, dual, um, wheel, tandem, tridom and so on so that you will get the total E cells equivalence axle loads and then divide it with the total number of vehicles which will give you the load spectra factor. So, this you can say that it is identical to the vehicle damage factor kind of thing wherein for the entire vehicle class you have determined one factor which is called the load spectra factor. But the advantage of this method is that you are not you know, categorizing it into different load groups but the entire spectra and it is the representation of the spectra or the variation of the spectra over uh, different load ranges is taken as such. Okay. Now, how do you get the cumulative standard axis? Once you get the uh, no, initial traffic A, uh, then project it multiplied by 365 into 1 plus R raised to n minus 1 by R, which is the growth factor, into any lane distribution factor D, uh, you can multiply. And then you multiply it with the load spectra factor, which is your uh, which is computed for all the axle loads uh, together. So, you multiply it with the load spectra factor, you can get the design traffic or the equivalent standard axle load factors. Okay. Uh, so, this is how a load spectra factor method is used in comparison with a vehicle damage factor or a uh, truck factor method.